Hello everybody, my name is Bob and this is my vlog and I'm going to take you to see my garden. Uh, this is actually the first garden I've ever done in my life, a full-on garden. I mean, I've planted you know, a plant here and there. Uh, this is actually the full, full, first full-on garden I've ever done in my life and it's going pretty well so I thought I'd show, you, show it to you. you. If you've seen previous vlogs, 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 if you've seen previous of them, you will have seen it at a much earlier state. So here we go. Okay, first up here is my tomato plants. Tomato plants. We're going to take a quick detour. I got some um, beans, melons, and more melons growing in this little box here. Now, according to conventional wisdom, that's, that's a little too close together, but, um, uh, but I don't really ascribe to that conventional wisdom myself. Um, so, and over here I've got some catnip and bee balm going on right there and I got a little sunflower over here Go, getting back to the tomatoes getting back to the tomatoes you got some uh, tomatoes growing right here tomato tomato uh, the, <coughs> these are uh, gypsy or saigon uh, tomatoes sorry about the air conditioning that's an uh, heirloom variety uh, it's uh, considered to be a, a black tomato, weirdly enough, because uh, it gets very dark maroon on the bottom and uh, sort of still sort of greenish on top. You can see the kind of color variation going on there. And there's a big old wasp. So I'm going to back off. And here, I, I planted these kind of late. Um, these are um, uh, a heirloom um, uh, Italian variety uh, cherry tomato. Oh, you're just a hoverfly. Hoverfly. Hello, hoverfly. Okay. Over here, I have some various herbs that are not doing that great. Over here, I've got uh, acorn squash. Acorn squash. A whole big mess of um, of. Um, what the fuck are they? Marigolds. They are called marigolds. Some hanging pots with um, some more cherry tomatoes and a pepper. A pepper. Uh, here are some eggplants. This is a, a relatively small variety of eggplant. Let's see if I can get the fruit here in a more presentable. That's a fairly fairly small. It gets to be you know about six to eight inches. Um, here's a little fly on my camera. Hello little fly. Over here we have more melons. These are uh, this is a um, heirloom variety um, uh, and I probably can't pronounce the name. It's Ananas de Cher Vert or something. It's something that Thomas Jefferson once grew. It's sort of a similar to a honeydew. Let me get you. Let me get you a overview first before we go into detail. Okay, this is sort of an overview shot. Over here, corn, beans, and squash. More, more squash. Over here are my indomitable cukes uh, that are taking over the world. Let's get back to where we were. Oh, and I just ran into a. I've got, I've got the world's weirdest trailing system. I swear, a trellising system. I swear to God, uh, it's not really. It looks like something the Adams family would come up with, honestly. But um, okay, so let's go back where we were. <coughs> Those are the uh, melons I showed you just a minute ago. The um, uh, ananas. Du chair vert or whatever the hell it's called. I don't know. Maybe I'll put a link in the description. Uh, eggplants, acorn squash, the tomatoes. Uh, this is kind of unusual. This is um, uh, uh, these are called uh, tiger nuts or, or chufa nuts. They're not actually nuts. Uh, they create little tubers down the ground, uh, and uh, the, the tubers have a um, almond-like or coconut-like fl uh, flavor, um, and uh, they're very easy to grow. Uh, they're actually uh, a close relative of one of the world's most pernicious weeds. So obviously growing them is not, a, not an issue. 
Okay, here in front we have a lemon squash. Lemon squash. More lemon squash. And we even have one little fruit developing over here. Let me see if I can kind of get a look at it here. And you see right there is a little fruit developing. We can get a little closer. Yeah, there's one, one little fruit growing there. <coughs> Exploring the foliage. Oh, uh, speaking of exploring, um, some of my posts on the uh, Facebook group may have led you to believe that there's going to be a Journey into Space episode soon, which there probably is going to be. It just I like, got sidetracked. So it's still, it's still I'm about halfway through recording it. I just need to find some time to actually do it. Exploring the footage. Exploring the footage. Um, okay. Uh, Chufa nuts or tiger nuts. Uh, tiger nuts were the original source of tiger milk. Uh, you may have heard of the brand name Tiger's Milk. Uh, in Spain, they, they make a, um, a, a drink sort of like uh, soy milk or almond, like al almond nut milk from the, uh, from the tubers. And that's the source of the original tiger's milk. That's the uh, chufa or tiger nut plant. Let's see. Have a little little um, Roma tomato growing here. That's a little Roma tomato. <laughs> flowers. 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 Okay, over here in this weird, wacky little box, I have uh, another uh, eggplant, the same, same variety. Uh, it's called um, Astrakhan eggplant. Uh, here's another of the Gypsy or Saigon uh, tomatoes. Oh, so I can get in here without hurting myself or someone else. Hey, here you can see the, color, the coloration of them. That they're sort of greenish, still kind of greenish on top and yellowish on the bottom. When it's um, done, it'll be, uh, they'll be, um, uh, kind of mar dark maroon on the bottom, but still have kind of greenish shoulders. Depending on how much heat they get. If they get more heat, they'll have less green shoulders. But they're not quite ready to pick. This is catnip. Catnip for mango. Mango, mango. Mango, mango. And now I must show you, along with the catnip, one of the mysteries of the garden. Actually, there are several mysteries of the garden. Okay, that's that's a garden gnome, which I made myself. Yeah, let's get you, get him into the sun, get the dirt blown off him. You can see him a little bit better. I made that with by my, my I made that by myself. Yes. I made that myself with polymer clay. Little gnome. Little gnome. That was little gnome number two. And over here, I get the dirt bone off him. The little gnome number one. That was my first little gnome. Little gnome. Little gnome. Okay. And also, there was yet another uh, mystery of the garden. Mystery of the garden. Woo! Uh, I was digging a, uh, uh, a bed for watermelons, which I'm going to put over here. Uh, that's where I'm going to put watermelons. Granted, it's a little bit late in the season to be growing watermelons, but it, we don't usually get any kind of chill in the air until Halloween. So, um, so anyway, I was over here digging my, my, my bed for my future watermelons. I haven't got the seed yet. Uh, and I dug this thing up. This thing. And when I first dug it up, I was like, what the fuck is that? Because obviously it was like a small figurine of some sort. Uh, but uh, at first, well, first I wasn't sure whether it was a figurine. I thought maybe, maybe just some sort of weird root or something. It's... Mm. Da -da -da. Da -da 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 -da. 
that I thought it might be some sort of weird cult figure. I literally dig this up, dug this up from my backyard. However, what I believe it actually is, is a very old, like from the 1960s, Batman figure. But it's just weird looking. Check it out, man. Check out the fucking head, man. What the hell's going on there? <laughs> what the fuck is up with that head, man? What, what's up with that face? So anyway, here's, here's my little Batman slash Cthulhu figure, which I keep over here by the garden gnomes. Right there. Okay, over here is the uh, corn and bean bed. Let me get a better angle on this so you can see it a little bit better. The corn and bean bed. I'm growing uh, corn, bean, and squash together in uh, the uh, Native American Three Sisters technique, uh, companion planting. I got a little acorn squash going down here. A little acorn squash is going down here. And over here, though these ones over here are not doing as well. Uh, and I can get a good. Uh, this is Hopi blue corn. Uh, it's um, obviously an heirloom grown by the Hopi Indians. Uh, and it is growing with uh, these beans, which are Haricot uh, Tarbes beans, uh, a, a um, French variety uh, renowned by uh, gourmets. Corn, corn, corn. Uh, so those are these are uh, like a white bean. Uh, and uh, if you if you buy uh, the Appalachian Controlli uh, beans from France itself, if you if you buy these beans from France. Basically, they're going to cost you 15 bucks a pound because they have to be hand-picked in the whole shebang. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but I mean, basically, they're just white beans. They're fancy white beans. I got, let, me, let me show you some little bean flowers here. Oh, here's one. Little bean flower. Little bean flower. We've got a number of beans going on. Got some big old beans growing up here. These will be ready to, to, to for shelly beans. Um, shelly beans are if you, if you cook if you cook beans when they are mature but not dry, those are shelly beans. Um, that's probably how I'm going to use a lot of these, at least from the outset. Got a number of little beans going going on over here. Seems to be have reduced flowering now that it's got so many beans set. I think it's off in the way. There's a little flower over there. So here is the uh, corn, bean, and squash patch. Squash, corn, and beans. Uh, the, uh, the the Hopi blue corn is not. Uh, well, it can be it can be eaten as sweet corn, but um, traditionally the, the the use for it is uh, you uh, dry the 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 cobs of the corn and then uh, you, you use those to make tortillas oh. excuse me and you can probably just barely tell actually have them uh, the, the uh, beans and corn growing out of their own each out of their own little hills here so I got three different three different hills number one number two and number three and I got them planted in hills uh, in the bed with some uh, leaves as mulch and also some uh, eggshells, which I just throw on there to get ground underfoot at some point for calcium. Let's see, over here next to the beans, beans. Uh, these are my cucumbers who are, that are running away with the place. They're, they're just going crazy. And I got the world's wackiest trellising system. This is a very retarded uh, trellis here. Uh, just a bunch of bunch of wire, a bunch of bunch of uh, twine going every which way. That's my trellis. And you can see it's it's fairly retarded. I just got some some twine looped around the, the edge of the fence, and it's uh, going over here. Now I'll show you some some cucumber babies. Cucumber babies. Well, that's what actually grown since I saw it last. Cucumber babies. Uh, these cucumbers actually have prickles on them, which was uh, struck me as kind of strange uh, because I'm used to the the tasteless, nasty, bland varieties in the um, in the uh, grocery stores. I was not aware that cucumbers could have prickles. Uh, these cucumbers have prickles. 
Cookie flowers. Cookie flowers. Let me check on this one over here. Yeah, oh god, he's getting big. Good thing I came and checked. He's about ready for eating. Yeah, yeah he's getting big. It's almost ready for going somewhere with. So here is my very vigorous uh, cuke plants. Uh, the cukes were attacked early on by a, um, uh, a some kind of root borer type um, creature. You can kind of see some damage here from it. You know, see right here. But it didn't seem to, to once, I, once I cleared the mulch away from the, the stems so that they wouldn't get attacked quite as much, it didn't seem to bother them at all after a certain point. They just, they just got over it. Also, with the lemon squash, it got attacked pretty heavily. Maybe I'll just tell from some of the uh, stems here. Or over here, you can tell a little bit. Uh, it's healed up pretty good, but uh, it got atta attacked really bad with um, um, stem borer insects. But they they were just like, yeah, whatever. Whatever, man. We don't care. Marigolds. That's actually over there. That that sad little stalk of corn there is what I call my Methuselah corn. Uh, I I'd gotten some uh, some white corn to make try to make uh, tortillas with uh, using nixtamalization, uh, and uh, I sort of, most of the most of the corn I just sort of left around for five years. I decided to plant one of the seeds. And the seeds were five years old, but I did manage to get this one to come up. But he's not 100% healthy. And certainly not as vigorous as these. Where are we going next? Uh, these in the back here are um, uh, are the same melons as I showed you before, the um, anise melons or whatever the hell they're called. It's a little tiny melon flower. Just by, by point of comparison, the, the melons had a bit of a problem starting out with. I think I, I, I had too much un, uncomposted organic material in the soil that kind of retarded their growth for a while. Uh, this was actually planted before this, so you can see see that uh, there's a big difference there. Uh, they're both related related uh, plant families, uh, but uh, this one's starting to come back after having had some problems originally, probably because I just had too much uncomposted uh, plant material. Okay. Oh 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 oh. Oh well, here's um here's uh, some parsley, which is, has not been doing that great. Of course, I got it planted real close here. Uh, I just sort of had, I started the seeds after losing a couple of crops. I started the seeds and, and just sort of left them there. But I mean, I, I get some parsley off it every once in a while. There we go. And uh, wild alpine strawberries. Um, according to conventional wisdom, I should be thinning this. There's, there's just there's coming out of all over everywhere. I don't thin if I can help it. So, but I got at least a couple plants that are are really doing extremely well. Uh, there's no 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 um, certainty that there will actually be fruit this year. Sometimes it takes them uh, a second year to to actually get to, to bearing fruit. But these are uh, wild al alpine strawberries. Okay, what's next? Oh, I'll, I'll show you some of my, my plants that are not doing so well. Um, this is mint. It actually came from a package of mint I got at the grocery store. I just stuck the stem in the ground and it's growing. A uh, little basil, it's not doing that great. This thing is um, um, Mexican mint marigold. And that's proper marigold. And that's catnip, I think. I think I showed you the, um, the melons I have over here. In this little area, but we have a little tiny melon flower right there. Yep, yep. All right. And here's sort of an overview of the whole place. And let's go out in the front yard. Now, one thing I got to show you before we uh, uh, go to the um, uh, front yard is uh, this plant, which the bugs all seem to really love for some reason. I wonder why, uh, but it, this is a called um, 
uh, uh, prickly lettuce. That's uh, a form of wild lettuce. See, it's all the wacko looking thorn look like things on the bottom of it. Yeah, you can see, kind of see it better there. Yeah, this is uh, called prickly lettuce or wild let lettuce. Uh, and the, um, uh, the latex from this uh, plant actually produces a opioid compound. I, I didn't plant it for that reason. I didn't plant it at all. Actually, it's just a weed growing in my backyard. Because uh, I have all the plants back here, I don't let, I don't get let want that. I don't let want the that. I don't let lawnmowers get back here. So this, that's why that's here. And there's another one over there by the corn, right there. Anyway, I, I find it interesting to, to to find the stories behind various wild plants. Uh, this is um, called the uh, prickly lettuce. Kind of interesting. Thing. Uh, bugs apparently love it. I don't know if they're getting stoned or what they're doing, but they apparently love it. Okay, here we are in the front yard. We have a lot of trees around here. Big time tree canopy. I don't know what the heck this is. It's, uh, these, these little patches have been appearing. I don't know if it's people dumping off their old construction materials or what the hell it is. Uh, little, little patches look like somebody ate a bunch of construction materials and then puked it up. Like, I have no idea what that is. Over here is the fig tree. Uh, it suffers a bit from lack of light. There's not a lot of light uh, going on here. Uh, but uh, there is some fruit going on here. And I look very much look forward to um, to having those in the summer. Usually have a, a when their when their fruits are, are getting ripe. I usually have um, a fig for breakfast every morning. Very nice. Also, there's hardly anything that smells nicer than a fig tree. Just the smell is nice. Uh, they also cool down the um, the area that they're in. Uh, they they help to cool the air because of the amount of water they pull up through the leaves. Last thing, uh, this is a bee balm plant. Um, Looking a little tired from the, the heat. It's awful hot today. Uh, so uh, that's catnip there. That's a bee balm, which is uh, good for making teas with and also good for attracting beneficial insects. These are just uh, uh, pecan saplings growing up here. Uh, this is my water supply. I like to let the water sit to get the chlorine out of it. Uh, so I'll pour, the, pour it into these uh, buckets and I'll let it sit for a while to get the chlorine out because that's uh, beneficial to getting the chlorine out is beneficial to microorganisms in the soil. Yes. Micro, microorganisms. And what I feed my plants is this. Now let's see all these little bottles. Bottles, 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 bottles. That's uh, Farmer Bob's, uh, Farmer Bob's Lizard Juice. Uh, homemade organic fertilizer. What, you, what may you ask, is it made from? It's made from pea. It is made from pea. To be exact, it is made from my pea. Um, that is because they have actually done studies that determine that um, uh, urine for fertilizer is actually just as effective as chemical fertilizers. And it's free. Uh, so what I do is I let it age for a month. Uh, and then after it's aged for a month, you see here I've got kind of got it in um, order here. Order of age. Now after it's aged, this is the oldest stuff, that's the newest stuff. And once it's aged for a month, I mix it uh, one to three uh, with water for direct fertilization or one to ten for fuller feeding. Uh, foliar feeding, I think it's called, uh, where you spray the leaves with the, with the fluid. So it's either like anywhere from one to three to one to ten with water. You mix it up and it's great. As you can see, it is a, it is a great plant food. 
and does a great job. That is Farmer Bob's Lizard Juice. It won't, it's not available for, for, for sale at any of your local stores. Okay, I think that's all for right now. Uh, and until next time, hasta la vista. So long. Goodbye. Gordon. Gordon, 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 Gordon. Gordon.